when you're rolling out pasta, it's helpful if you kind of start in the shape vaguely that you want it to end up in. And because we're using the ravioli machine, we want it to end up in a nice, even oblong. So um, roll it out to kind of a basic, sort of a rough rectangle that's thin enough that will go through the pasta machine. And then you're going to take the pasta and you're going to take it on the wider setting. It's a bit, it can get a bit tough on the first go. And then because um, it's rested, you'll see that it's a bit, it's got a bit streaky. So what we want to do is you want to fold it over um, in the same way that you laminate pastry. You're going to laminate it by folding it over, giving it a quick roll. And then pushing, and then putting it through again. And this supports the kneading process as well. So we'll just do that one more time. And it does help when you get these little tails to kind of keep the shape a bit more even. With these Imperial pasta machines, what you want for the ravioli trays is for it to be basically the width of the pasta machine. So you want to get it as thick as possible. And then you're going to take each roll down by one every time on the pasta with the thickness. So if you get to this point um, and it's very uneven, so we can just cut the end off this, then you could then fold it over into kind of book shape like this to roll it out again. So actually, let's do that. So I'm gonna fold that in to thirds. Then we have to go back to the beginning, otherwise we'll get ourselves in a pickle and you'll end up with ripped pasta, which is not what we want. So just give it a quick roll again. Take it to the wider setting again, and we'll just do it all over again. So with these ravioli trays, because it's going to double up when you're, well, for any ravioli really, but particularly with these, I'm going to take it to the second to last width on this Imperial Pasta machine. Um, if you take it right to the end, right to the finest one, it's very difficult not to get um, holes in it, especially because you kind of have to push down on the on the tray to get it to um, kind of take the filling. So we've got it on the second to last one. Like it's 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 maybe thicker than um, you expect but um, it will stretch when you put it in the ravioli tray. So that is one of our sheets of pasta. So you start by dusting a little bit of semolina over your ravioli tray, just so that you're helping it not to stick. Um, and then you're gonna take one of your um, sheets of pasta. If you've got one that's slightly wider, use that one as the base, because that's what you're gonna push into the holes. Um, and you should have just, you only want to put semolina or flour, ideally semolina, on one side, so that when you're stick, when you're putting the other sheet on top, it's going to stick. So I'm just going to flip this over onto the tray, and then gently press your fingers into each of the holes to make a little indentation. Sometimes you have to lift up the sides to avoid cutting. The ravioli and this should stretch the pasta it will pop up again but once you've filled it with filling it will weigh it down so then you're going to take a spoon of your filling and stick it into each one you might need to press down as you go You can push the filling down into it a bit as well to kind of make sure you've got enough in it because you don't want to be stingy. Okay. 
then just to give it a hand um, sticking, just run your fingers, put, drop your fingers in some water and run along all of the edges where the ravioli tray is going to have to stick together. So you'll see it underneath if you run your fingers along it. So that each point, you could also do this with egg white, but water's fine if you happen to have egg whites available. I try and keep the, <laughs> try and keep the uh, filling where it's supposed to be, not like I'm doing very well. Okay, and then you're gonna take your other sheet and you're gonna take, I haven't, I haven't actually put semolina on either of these sides. So I'm gonna just lay it on top. You're gonna press it down with your hands first, just to really get that filling to go right to the bottom of the tray. Also, it feels very nice. And then I like to turn it lengthways because it's easier to handle. Then with a special little rolling pin, you have to press down quite hard. And you might have to do it a couple of times to get it to really, really cut it. And you will get a little bit of overspill of the, of the filling, but that's fine. You can just pull it out and use it again. So you can see, you can really see when it's, when it's cut because you can see the tray coming through. So you just need to roll over it a couple of times. This, this you can just wrap back up again using cling film and roll it out again. You don't want to waste it, it's perfectly usable. And then all you need to do, give it a little tap, out they come, and then you will need to give them a little bit of a gentle pull to get them to come apart. And the lovely thing about using ravioli tray is they just come out so perfectly. Because of the, the indentations, you get these beautiful semi-spherical mounds, which you just don't get when you do them with a pastry cutter or by hand. And then they're ready to go. So if you're gonna store them, you just need to dust a tray with some semolina, place them on there. They'll keep in the fridge for a day or so, but they also freeze really well so you can just dust them in somewhere, put them in a tray, put them in the freezer, and then you just need to add a couple of minutes to the cooking time at the end.